Since the inception of the West African Senior Secondary School Certificate Examination, university requirement has largely called for five subjects. Mandatory among these are English language and mathematics. Every year, thousands of students run into the course of either having to resit for not getting credits on English and mathematics or painfully changing career path or into same. To help modify this narrative, Star Television presents on your screen Learning Garage, a platform that guarantees better performance in English language and mathematics with a team of experienced teachers. So this solution you all are invited, especially those facing WASC. Learning Garage comes to you on Mondays, Wednesdays and Fridays from 7 p.m. to 8 p.m. Repeat broadcasts are screened on Saturdays from 7 a.m. to 8 a.m. and on Sundays from 1 p.m. to 2 p.m. Join host Ali Santa Kamara. If you mean such element, then of course we say the waters of the world in that regard. And Babatunde Gaira Lamin on these days to make a world of difference. Action that has a numerator which is less than the denominator, we term it as a proper fraction. Hello there, I am Santa, this is Learning Garage, the grammar segment. Um, today, we are going to look at verbs. Of course, the components being with verbs. Verb actually is a very broad topic when it comes to grammar. There are a number of elements to consider. So today we will begin with verb, the basic component, and then we will look at some past questions I mean, depending on those components. Now, what is verb? A verb, well, verb has been, been, has been defined in a different, shall I say, in different fashions. Of course, some say verb is an action word, and some say verb is a doing word. Some even combine both verb is an action word or a doing word. That's fine. But because there are other verbs that do not express action but are themselves verb so if we only say a verb is an action word and ends at that it will mean that we are we are, we are leaving out the other verbs which are themselves not expressing any action so the best to look at will be a verb is i mean a verb expresses action or a state of being you see so that definition I mean, encompass all the components making verb itself. So that's what it is. So a verb expresses an action or a state of being. Um, there are a number of verbs. There are different kind of verbs. But I will take you through the most common ones we use. And then, or shall I say, the most common ones in use. Then we will, of course, look at the definitions and what's, the, of course, the components making them. So, of course, we have defined verb. It's a verb is the verb expresses an action or a state of being there are a number of verbs but the basic ones i want us to look at will be action verb or dynamic verb um other verb helping verb and we have linking or copular verb so we say we begin with the first one action verb action verb is the kind of verb that expresses an action okay the action expressed can either be mental or physical, meaning the action will take place, physically speaking, or will happen actually in our mind. So an action verb is the one that expresses an action, and the action expressed could either be mental, could either be the one happening in the mind, or the one we could see or visualize, I mean, in real life. So we say um, the element we see on the mental, like verb like think, verb like believe, imagine these are mental action they are they are activities that take place in the mind thinking believe imagine you see they take place in the mind or um, activity happening in the mind but of course if you contrast think to fly you see fly is physical it could be seen uh, if you contrast belief to seeing you see again seeing is physical if you contrast imagine to smile you again see how smile is physical but they are all of course action verbs 
So action, the action expressed could be mental or physical. Remember, we say learning grammar follows two prongs, the structure and the usage. So you, of course, have to know the structure, then you also have to know the usage. So think is mental, fly is physical, believe is mental, sing is physical. Of course, imagine, and there are a number of them, memorize is all there. You see, so that is the first kind of verb we find, action verb. There are a number of them, but I'll just give you three. Action verb, or dynamic verb, auxiliary verb, or helping verb, linking verb, or copular verb. We'll look at them step by step. Now we are on action verb. We say the action, action verb is one that expresses an action. We say the action expressed could be mental or physical. So example here we have, the boy ran home. The boy ran home. And ran here is uh, an action verb, and it is what? It is a physical action at that. We have here, the headmaster believed that the message was true. You see, here we have two kind of verb, but basically speaking, we are looking at, um, we are looking at action verb. Otherwise, um, otherwise, otherwise, was here yeah, is also a verb. But we are not dealing with was actually. We are we are actually looking at action verb. Believe is a mental action. It's a mental activity. Okay, so we are looking at action verb for the first kind. Let's get down to the other kind. Auxiliary verbs are verbs that help the main verbs of a sentence to build what we refer to as verb phrase. Ordinary verb assist main verb to construct a verb phrase. What is verb phrase? When you have two or three or four verbs coming together, we call them verb phrase. So what ordinary verbs do is that they sit by action verb. Together, they, they make what we refer to as um, verb phrase. So together, the verb phrase becomes a component of a sentence. Together with the subject, they make up a sentence. So an ordinary verb is that kind of verb that helps the main verb of a sentence to construct a verb phrase. So, and the main verb mostly could, could be action verb in this case. So thankfully, we have seen action verb. So when you attach an ordinary verb to an action verb, Shall I say you place them nearby? You have what the first will be regarded as what as other verb, and the other coming will be action verb. Okay, so other verb, the work of other verb is to assist main verb to construct verb phrase. I've told you a verb phrase has to do with having two or three verbs coming together. So that could be referred to as, I mean, other verb. I mean, could be referred to as verb phrase. Now we have different kind of other verb. We have verb to be, we have verb to have, we have verb to do, you know, and modal other verb. So, verb to be, whenever you have verb to be or verb be, we mean am, we mean is, we mean was, we mean are, we mean were, and we even mean been, b i n g and b e e n. These are all there. But the most, well, the most common ones we consider here, the am, the is, the was, the are, and the were, okay? They are under verb to be. They are paradigms we find under verb to be, okay? So verb to be, what they do, they most times attract or they most times assist action verb with ing. You see, Abu is coming home. Coming. Abu is coming. You see, you have is there and after what you have there, you have coming. So is is assisting coming. Together, they form what we call verb phrase. And that verb phrase form a component of the sentence, okay? With, together with the subject, they form a sentence. So, is coming, is is another verb, coming is the main verb. Together, they form verb phrase. So, is is a kind of other verb, and it is, we find is under verb to be. So when I hear verb to be, you mean am, um, we mean is, you mean was, you mean are, uh, we mean were, they are all under verb to be. And verb to be, be is what is one kind of other verb. Okay? So example we have here, we have the children. The children are playing together. The children are playing together. We realize that of course, are is the other verb assisting the main verb playing. 
together they form what we refer to as a verb phrase. And I've told you a verb phrase is when you have two or three verbs coming together. They form one component. So are and playing, in fact, are the components. They are what we refer to as a verb phrase. And are is the other verb. Playing is the main verb, what we refer to as lexical verb in this case. Okay? So that is one. Then remember, am, is, was, are, were, are all under verb to be, and verb to be is one kind of what? Other verb. We say other verb assists main verb to construct a verb phrase. Okay? They must have to assist a verb. Otherwise, they cannot be, they cannot be seen as other verb. A verb could only be seen as other verb if it assists another verb. If it assists, shall I say, action verb or a main verb in this case. So, uh, the other kind of other verb is verb to have. When I say verb to have, I mean the have, I mean the has, I mean the had. We call them verb to have. Have, has, had, they are verb to have. Okay, remember, they could only be regarded to be other verb if after has, after had, after um, uh, have, you have an other verb. That verb is supposed to be action verb. So together they give you what? They give you verb phrase. So, and what they do, this kind of verb, have, has, had, always attracts um, the past participle of the verb. Like written, like eating, like flown, these are all there. So you see for instance, she has eaten, she has eaten the food. She has eaten the food, where has is not the verb. And eaten is the main verb. Eaten is the main verb here. So what happens here? Has only assisted what? Um, eaten. Okay? Together, they form what? Together, they form what we refer to as um, a verb phrase. This component form a verb phrase. Together, they form a verb phrase. Whereas, um, has is the helping verb. And of course, eaten is the main verb. Together, they form a verb phrase. Okay, so as could only be seen to be an other verb if it sits next to an action verb, where in fact it is assisting that action verb. Otherwise, it could be another, another kind of verb. Okay, so the other kind of other verb is verb to have. I told you, other verb, the job, the job of other verb is to assist the main verb to construct a verb phrase. So we have seen verb to be, the am, the is, the was, the are, the were, they are verb to be. They could only be seen uh, uh, to be having verbs when they in fact assist in nearby action verb at that. Okay, we have again verb to have. They again could be regarded as what? As verb, as other verb, if they assist in nearby action verb, they could only be seen as that. So the other kind of other verb is again what, we, what about verb to do. Verb to do includes do, does, did. Do, does, did could be seen as ordinary verb if after them you have a verb, in fact, they are seat. What they do, they attract their infinitives. This means when you use do, does, did, the other verb coming should not take s, should not take ing, should not be in past tense. So any verb that does not have s, uh, does not have ing, that is not, that is not, that is not in past tense, is, it is, we refer to that verb as what? As an infinitive. And it could be, in fact, a bare infinitive. Like for instance, run, jump, laugh, sing, cry. These are bare infinitive. But if I say run, if I say runs, it is not. If I say running, it is not. If I say run, it is not. Okay? A verb could only be seen to be in a bare infinitive state if it does not carry any attachment if it what if it is not in past tense so what verb to do does they in fact i mean it's attract bare infinitive so when you use do when you use does when you use did the verb coming supposed not to take anything like s like past tense like ing at all so again the other verb so example we have here he does not know me does is the other verb, it is assisting the mental action verb no. Okay? Together, the format we refer to as a verb phrase. Leave out not. Not is not an action. Not is an adverb. But you always find, you always find not where verbs are. They're like friends to verb. 
you see, you find not where verbs are. So you see, we, we are, the, it has been used there to negate the, the, the verb, to negate the entire idea. But not is not a verb. Not is an adverb. So what does do here? I mean, what does, I mean, what does does here? It assists the main verb no. And together they form what we refer to as a verb phrase. That's the job. And that's one component of the sentence. Okay, the other component is the, is the he, subject, together they form what? A sentence. So you see, an other kind of other verb is verb to do. So we come down to that other kind of other verb, which we refer to as modal other verb. The can, the cool, the shall, the should, the may, the might, you know, the will, the would, the must, the ought to, the need, need to, used to, have to, had, you know, also had better, there are there two, we call these ones modal verbs, okay? Can, cool, shall, should. So can, present tense, past tense for can is could. So again, we have shall, past for shall is should. Again, we have will, past for will is, is, is would. Again, uh, with would. Again, we have must. Again, we have ought to. Again, we have used to, we have have to, we have had better, we have dare to. These ones are all with other verb. They could only be seen to be auxiliary verb if after them you have a main verb, if after them you have an action verb. Okay? So the ordinary verb with the action verb together make up what we call verb phrase. So by grammatically they are called verb phrase, linguistically, they are not verb phrase. Linguistically, the entire predicate is called verb phrase. Linguistically. But grammatically, shall I say, the grammar will say, of course, they are. Uh, as we refer to as a verb phrase. So here we have an um, example of these ones. You see we have Memuna. Memuna, Memuna can lift the load. Memuna can lift the load. So here can is the other verb, the modal other verb. Can is assisting the main verb lift. Together they form a verb phrase. Okay, a verb phrase. And this verb phrase is one component of the sentence. The other component is, 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 is memuna. Memuna is the subject, of course, so they, together they form a sentence. So can is the other verb, and lift is, of course, the main verb. Together they form what? They form a verb phrase. So can will, in fact, modal other verb are, in fact, they are the typical other verb because they always have to assist. Verb to do, verb to be, and verb to have could be other verb and they could not be other verb. They could either be or not. But for modal other verb, it is actually the true other verb. I mean, it never changes. Okay, component on the modal other verb never. They are like that. They always assist. Okay. Other example would be Sule used to live in Bo in the nineties. So again, here we have um, used to is other verb. It is assisting the main verb live. Okay. Together, they form what we refer to as a verb phrase. Okay, used to is a verb that sh that uh, we, we use to indicate past activity, past habitual act activity, things we used to do but we are not doing again. So you see, so that's it for other verb. Um, we say we have up to four components making other verb: verb to be, am, um, is, was, our, verb to have, have, has, had. Again, verb to I mean, verb to do, do, does, did, and what other verb, the can, will, the can, should, shall, should, I mean, uh, may, might, they're all there. We say verb to, verb to, verb to be, am, is, was, always attract ing verb, ing mean verb. We say verb to have, have, as, add, always attract the past participle of the verb. Okay, we say verb, verb to do, always attracts verb in a, in a be a infinitive state, meaning the other verb coming supposed not to take S, ING, or in a past tense like that. We say all the other verb, the can, should, shall, of course, they are in fact the real, you know, other verb because they are always like that. They, they should, the, the key thing here, they should assist another verb for them to be regarded as what? As other verb, otherwise they are not, you see? So we can't do anything verbs. Linking verbs do not express action. Linking verbs do not express action. They only connect the subject of a sentence to its complement. 
okay or they only connect the subject of a sentence to something in the predicate that describes the subject or that identifies or rename the subject linking verb does that they don't express action they don't help any other verb in fact most they are alone always they all the only link they, 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 what they do is that they say a is b what they do they say a is b amara is this they always that so what linking verb does is it's what it connects the subject of a sentence meaning the word that a sentence is about they connect that word to an other word which is the other name for the subject or which in fact describe the subject that is what they do they don't of course expect action they don't they don't in fact um they don't help the main verb they only do this linking so you see we have a number of them again you see again we have here verb to be verb to be again is another component on the linking verb be very careful i told you verb to be could only be regarded as um helping verb if in fact it assists a nearby action verb meaning a nearby action verb with ing but if of course you don't have any action verb after verb to be then of course the verb to be the arm the is the was the are uh, could either be ordinary verb or a linking verb it could be linking verb if it's connect if it says the subject a is b then of course if it, if it connect the subject to a word that is the other name for the subject or to, to a word that describes the subject we call that verb to be as a linking verb so am is what our you know also we have can be we have we have shall be, we have will be, we have would have been, we have could have been, would have, we have would have been, should have been. These are all components under verb to be. So would have been, could have been, should have been, could also link the subject of a sentence to a word that, of course, describes it or a word that renames it. So example we have here, Kadi is a lawyer. Is does not help any action verb here. And thankfully, we haven't got any action verb here. Is that a verb? Is actually um, is linking or is as linked the subject Kadi to a word that is the other name of Kadi where we have a lawyer. You see, we say A is B. That is what linking verb does. Linking verb says A is B. So linking verb only connects the subject of a sentence, which is what? Kadi in this case, to what? To a word that what that identifies or renames it. So the other name of Kadi is what is lawyer. Kadi is a lawyer. Kadi is a lawyer B. You see, so is only links Kadi to actually, I mean, a title that is the other name for Kadi. So so is there does not of course help in action verb. It could be uh, it could is could be other a verb if you have ing word after is but in this case it's not next we have the men are soldiers the men are soldiers soldiers the men are soldiers are here is a linking verb it links so the men as subject to a word that is the other name for the men here soldiers okay soldiers so men is a and soldiers is what is b so you see is we don't have any ing after a here so a is what a is a linking verb a is a linking verb it is not an ordinary verb it is not an ordinary verb we have ordinary verb we have ordinary verb okay so next we have would have been would have been again is a linking verb together would have been is a linking verb please study them okay would have been links would have been connect the subject we to i mean a word that is the other name for this we so to know whether in fact uh would have been is a linking verb you can substitute this would have been with are okay so we are teachers we are teachers so would have been is a linking verb so it only links what the subject we to the word that's identifies or renames or the word that is the other name for the subject we so here are teachers so you see remember would have been could have been should have been if you say would have been could have been you don't have ing after would have you would have been then it would have been what the linking verb if i say 
Kadi would have been doing it. Imagine we have after the would have been you have ing there. No, of course. Kadi would have been doing. That meaning it means would have been are all under the verb. The doing there is the main verb, the action verb. Okay, but if you only have would have been, could have been, should have been, the key thing here, the been supposed to be the last word. Be or been should be the last word. Okay, but if you have ing word after the been or be, for instance, then of course. The would and have and been are all under the verb. So if you have three or four other verb on the short, if at all, the last word is an action verb. So you see what well, here we only have would have been. So would have been here, yeah, yeah, together makes what uh, I mean a linking verb because it's, it connects the subject of the sentence to a word in the predicate that's what that identifies or describes the subject. That's the key thing to know about linking verbs. So the first kind of linking verb is verb to be. The other kind again we we'll look at are verbs related to the five senses: sight, sound, feel, smell, taste. These are verbs of the five senses. They could either be action verb or they could be linking verb. Okay. Example here we have what the bed. The bed feels soft. The bed feels soft. So imagine we have here feels. Feels is a linking verb. Feels connect bed, the subject, to a word in the predicate that what? That describes the subject. In this case, not identify because soft here is, is, is an adjective. Okay, so know whether feels is a linking verb. If you are confused, substitute feel or any of the five senses verb with what? With verb to be, meaning the am, the is, the was, the other word. If you remove the feel, if we remove feel here and, and substitute any of the verb to be in this context, if the sentence reads well, then the feel is what? It's a linking verb. But if it does not read well, it is an action verb. So let's just put here is for instance. Let's just substitute is for feel here. The bed is soft. So feel here is what? Feel here is a linking verb. Because when we, when we, when we replace is, when you put is in place of feel, we realize, of course, this sentence what is well. The bed is soft. So feel is what? It's a linking verb. But if we say, for instance, I feel the bed, then if you, you if we use, we remove feel and substitute any of the verb to be among am, uh, um, is, was, or are, and were. In this case, let's, let's, let's put the am. I, eh? I feel the bed, and let's put the am. I am the bed. You see? So it doesn't make sense. So feel as what? Feel there is an action verb. So when you replace the, the five sentences verb with verb to be, if they make sense, if the sentence makes sense, then what? Then the, the taste, the feel, the you know, the smell is what? It's a linking verb. But if, if it fails to make sense, it's what? It's an action verb at that. So we have the soup tastes good. You see, test links soup, the subject, to a word in the predicate that's what? That describes the subject. In this case, good. Good is, a, is an adjective. So, again, to know whether test is a linking verb, let's use member of verb to be am, is, was, are in this case. Let's just use is again. The soup is good. It makes sense. So, it's what? Test what? Test is a linking verb or a copula verb at like that. You see, it's, it's connected the subject soup to a word that describes it okay so of course the a soup is a a is b and b is what good in this case that's it so the other component of what of a linking verb is the verb doing with the five senses the other one the other component making linking verb we have verbs in, in the state of being meaning seem appear look grow stay become turn Turn, remain, prove. These are verbs we refer to as verb in the state of being. Okay? They do not express action. They could not they could, could express action and they could not please. Okay? If you want to know whether they are being used as a linking verb, always use verb to be as the, I mean, the test case, as the litmus test to, to, uh, to prove whether they are linking or the action. So here we have again, he looks good. He looks good. So know whether looks is a linking verb, to know whether in fact looks connect the subject he to a word in the predicate that describes it, which is good. So now let's just use here is again. 
He is good. So you see, look is what? Looks is what? It's a linking verb. But the first of all, it stands, he looks at me. So no matter looks is a linking verb or an action verb, let's use that again. Is. He looks at me. Let's say, he is me. That doesn't make any sense. So looks at what? Looks there is an action verb. It is not a linking verb or copular verb at like that. So next, we come down to appear. You appear beautiful. So no matter appear has linked the subject you to a word in the predicate that what? That describes it, which is beautiful. Again, we can use again, ah, in this case, a component of what? Of am. We have, we have, of, of B. We have, have to be, we have am, is, was, ah. In this case, let's, let's use here, ah. So, you are beautiful. You see, it sounds well. You are beautiful. You see? But for instance, he appears, or you appear late. You appear late. Let's use here, ah. You appear late. You are, I mean, I mean, uh, you, I, I'm sorry. You, uh, the sun appear in the horizon, for instance. We use are uh, there, or in this case, is here. The sun is in the horizon. Now, it doesn't actually conform to what we mean here. So, appear in that case, an action verb. The sun appears. For the father, of course, it can, it can, uh, uh, it's come, it can appear, the sun appeared. That one is actually a typical action verb. But if we substitute from the verb to be, and then if we read the sentence, if it makes sense, it's a linking verb. If it doesn't make sense, it is not. Okay? The idea dealing with the sun, and the other deal with uh, uh, he appears great. For instance, he appears great, he is great. You see, it makes sense there. So that is the litmus test to use to prove whether a, a component of the verb in the state of being or verbs of the five senses, whether they are being used as linking verb. What to do is to substitute the verb to, to be. If they make sense, then they are linking. If they don't make sense, then they are what? They are. If they, if they make sense, they are. Linking, if they don't make sense, they of course will not be. They might not be linking verb. Okay, so we come down to the other kind. At the start of our class, we say we have the three, we have different kind of verbs, but we, we, we limit ourselves to those three. The action verb or dynamic verb, the ordinary verb or helping verb, and now the linking, the linking verb. Okay, and then we are in fact over with linking verb. I'll give you an example of those ones. So now, so much for those ones. Please try to understand them because they are very, very key. See, grammar is all about what? Understanding the structure and also understanding, I mean, the usage. And I've given you both for the three kind of verb I've, I've outlined in, at the start of our class. Meaning the so-called action verb, you know, the linking verb, ordinary verb, I've given you a way to see them. Now we, we come down to something very different. I mean, the issue of full infinitive and bare infinitive. Okay, so, in fact, in English, when we say infinitive, we are referring to the, a base form verb, to a, the verb in its base form. Run, jump, sing, laugh, cry. These are all what we refer to as infinitive. So whenever you don't put a verb in the past tense, whenever you don't attach inflection to them, S or ED to them, or, or ING to them, for instance, when a verb is in its citation form, when I mean, I mean the base form, then that verb is what? It's in, it's, 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 Infinitive, like play, jump, run, sing, laugh, cry. These are one. These are all infinitive. So, but we have two kind of infinitive. We have full infinitive. We have bare infinitive. The full infinitive is when you attach, you know, when you attach to next to the verb. When I mean to, I mean to, t o to, but it should be to. So, when we at attach to next to a base form verb. So the two and the base form verb together what gives us what? Together gives us what we refer to as full infinitive. Okay? The two there is called a particle. So the particle with the base form verb gives us the full infinitive. So for instance, to run, to jump, to sing, to laugh, to cry, to imagine. These are what? These are all full infinitive. So the bare infinitive is when you remove the two. And the verb remains alone. So imagine, play, run, sing, laugh, cry. These are bare infinitive. But to play, to imagine, to sing, to laugh, to cry, they are all full infinitive. So it's very simple to understand that in fact infinitive could be the verb in its base form. A verb without s, a verb without ing, a verb 
have not been put in past tense. So that kind of verb is what? It's a base, it's a base form verb or a verb, I mean, a very infinitive verb. Or shall I say, infinitive, we'll say. So run, jump, sing, laugh, cry, you know, play, take. These are all what? They are all bare infinitive. If I say to play, to run, to jump, to imagine, they are full infinitive. So far, there are two kind of, we, we, we have the full, the bare. Okay? So now you see uh, uh, do or to do. This is what? It's bare, this is what? There is full infinitive. Okay? Here we have play. Bare infinitive. Here we have what? To play is full infinitive. But let me just tell you what they do. Let me tell you what bare infinitive is where they do. Bare infinitive, there are words we use that in fact always uh, attract bare infinitive. Remember. Or I, I, let me just say this one again. There are words we use that always attract bare infinitive. I know you don't know what is bare infinitive. Meaning is the is the verb in the base form. Or a verb without ing, a verb without s, a verb without, I mean, a verb not in past tense, you know, a verb in its ordinary form. We call it, I mean, uh, canonical form. Canonical form, or we call it again, citation form, or base form verb, if you like to put simple for you. So, run, jump, they are called canonical form. You see? So, a bare infinitive verb is like that. Run, jump. Laugh, cry, sing. But if I say runs, if I say running, if I say run, they are not. Okay? So, there are verbs we use that attract bare infinitive. Meaning, there are verbs or there are words, I would say. There are words we use. If we use those words, the verb coming after those words is supposed to be in bare infinitive form. Meaning, the words. What like what? What like... Um, like uh, like watch, what like here, what like feel, what like um, what like sense, what like see, what like um, help, you know why, what like make, what like bid, what like let, and what like have. These ones they always attract via infinitive. Actually, why is not a verb in this case? But if you use verb, if you use why, I will tell you how. How why will attract a bare infinitive. So, for instance, I watch them do it. I watch them do it. So, these words, whenever we use them, the other verb coming supposed to be in a bare infinitive state. If you use watch, if you use here, whether past tense or present tense, when you use them, the verb coming supposed to be in bare infinitive. Whether I say watch or watches or watched, whether I say hear or had, whether I say feel or felt, whether I say sense or sensed, whether I say see or saw, whether I say help or helped, or make or made, or bid or bid, you see, or have or had, whatever. The verb coming after this one is supposed to be, I mean, in a bare infinitive statement, very careful uh, with the verb um, have, have, that is a way to use have that actually will attract a bare infinitive, okay? So imagine I watch them do it. You cannot say I watch them doing it. Why? So I watch, watch is the, is the, is the word. So the, any verb coming after watch is supposed to be in bare infinitive. No S, no I, no nothing. So I watch them do it. You cannot say I watch them doing it. Next, heard. I heard him say it. You cannot say I heard him saying it. You see, feel. Again, sense. You see, I sensed it. You see, for it, see again. Past tense has been, of course, saw as well. I saw him go. You know, say, I saw him going at that. Help. You see, she helped me do it. Don't say, don't say she helped me to do it. Of course, some will say, some will use, of course, to after help. Okay? But other one. You see, she helped me do it. She helped me do it. You know, say, she helped me to do it at that. Next, why worry? See, why worry? Huh? Why stress? You know, say, why I used to see. So when you use why, the verb coming is supposed to be in this case. In this case, please. If I say, why are you worried? That's a different case. But you only use why. Why worry? Why go? Why feel bad? Why see it so? See? Feel, see is all about. See? Why feel bad? Feel is the verb. You see, why say so? See? Say again is what? It's, a, it's an infinitive verb. 
I mean, a verb in an in, in infinitive form. Shall I say verb in a bare infinitive form like that? You see, and then have have is a very special case. Have, for instance, the have taking it is different. When somebody makes you do something, that when you use verb or you use have in that case, the verb coming supposed to be be infinitive. You see, uh, they have me do it. You see, he has me do it. He has me do it. Okay, okay. They have me say it. They have, mm, they have me say it. No, say they have me saying it. They have me uh, said it. Okay, they have me say it. In that case, you see, it's when you use have in the context where it means, I mean, being actually being forced to do something or being, of course, you are working on kind of permit, you are working, working on under kind of a condition, you are being conditioned to do something, then have could be used, I mean, in that regard, have could be used. As a verb, I mean, as a verb or a word that attracts a uh, bare infinitive. So we now let's have a look at some was past questions regarding all the things we have done regarding uh, the kind of verbs we have looked at, what they attract, or like the verb, verb, we have verb to have, verb to do, verb to be, and another like verb. And the key, con the key thing is that we say. When you say, um, we say verb to do actually attracts bare infinitive. But we use do, does, did, the verb coming suppose. What? Not to, I mean, take S, not to take ING, not to be in past tense. Remember those ones, carefully speaking. There are a number of them. And we uh, talk about the verb again. The can, the should, the shall, the should, I mean, I mean, the had better, the there, the there too. These all are. Uh, Mother of the verb again, they attract their infinitive, meaning after them, the verb coming supposed not to take s, not to be in past tense, not to take ing. There are there are one being please. So we go, we, we begin with the first pass question on verbs. So you had better dash, you are you had better dash the doctor's instruction. Actually, at better is a modal on the verb. Add better is a modal or the verb. I mean, we say modal or the verb attract via infinitive, meaning the verb coming after modal or the verb. What? Suppose not to take s. I mean, not to take ing, not to be in past tense like that. So add better means should. Whenever you say add better, it means should. You had better come home. It means you should come home. You had better do this job. It means you, 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 it means you should. So it means should in this case. So had better means should if you are actually thinking about what it means. It means should, should. Okay. So if we have established the truth behind had better, that is what that we say it is a modal or the verb, and modals what modals attract by infinitive. So now let's let, let now go to the object the the options. So here we have obey. You had better obey the doctor's instruction so of course without having to go far a is the answer but of course we see b but to qualify in fact why a could be the answer let's let continue with the remaining option we have you had better obeyed it's wrong because obeyed is in past tense remember it has ed here that one shows of course it's in past tense again you are you are better have obeyed no we don't ever use have Obeyed in this sequence after had better. Remember the verb coming after had better supposed to be in bare infinitive and we should have not every verb. So it could be having two every verb here. It could have again is helping add better another one again. When we use my other verb, we must have no other verb after it. Okay? So again we have the being obeyed. Being again is helping verb. How could we have so modal verbs are the kind of posh, they are the kind of generous verb. That in fact, after them, you require no other verb but just the main verb. Just the bare infinitive. You require no other other verb. After them, just the infinitive. Okay? So, our answer is what it will be. Next one again, uh, you add better dash examination. Again, we, the same thing applies here. We have established the meaning of add better, and in fact, uh, you should, we should use bare infinitive after, after add better because of what? Add better means should, and should is a is a modal other verb, and after modal other verb, the verb coming after them is supposed to be in bare infinitive. 
So here we have written, you had better written wrong because written is in past participle. Then we have again, you had better write, is correct. It's in present tense. It's in what? What you refer to as is in, it's in, a, it's in, in the bare infinitive state. So B is correct. You had better write the examination. And C, you had better wrote, or oh, we say the verb coming after better supposed to be in past tense. And B, you had better be writing, of course, our answer is what? Is B. We proceed with more questions on the verbs we have covered so far. The witness saw, swore that he saw mana dash it. The witness saw that he saw mana. So the key thing here is what? Saw. Remember, I told you, we have words that we use. In fact, after them, the verb coming after those words, supposed to be in bare infinitive. Saw is one kind. Okay, the verb is see. I'm sorry. So is one kind. So the present sense, the present sense of, the present sense of 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 so is C, and C is one kind of verb that, if you use it, you must not have the verb coming after it supposed to be in bare infinity. The verb coming after it supposed to what? Supposed not to have ing. Supposed not to have s. Supposed to be in past tense. You see, so. So the witness swore that he saw mana dash it. Okay, A we have what? Mana did it. Uh uh. Did it in what? It's in past tense. B mana do it, correct? Okay. C mana does it. No. This one is singular. And of course, uh D mana done it. Mana mana he saw he saw the witness swore that he saw mana done it. And you see, of course, how it sounds all at that. Okay? So we go for the verb in bare infinity. The verb no s. It's in plural state, okay? Be infinitive verbs are in plural states. They don't take S, no ing, like that. So our answer, of course, is, of course, um, answer, of course, option B, do. So the witness swore that he saw mana do it. Next, we have many of us are the president dash on radio. Many of us are the president dash on radio June 2000. Okay? The key thing here is what? The component, the key thing to... To look for is heard the present tense being here so heard we say heard is one kind of verb that attract bare infinitive when you use heard the verb coming supposed to be what in a bare infinitive state no s no ing no past tense okay in plural state so a we have uh m many of us had the president dash on the radio a we have speaks no this is in present tense it has s B, to be speaking no way, we have two and be speaking there is wrong. And C, we have sp spoke, this one is in past tense, no way. And the answer is what? It's D, speak. Many of us are the president dash on the radio, okay? So our answer is what? Is option D. Many of us are the president dash on the radio. So many of us are the president speak on the radio. That's the answer, of course. Now we come down to option, the next, the next question. The story she was reading made a dash. The story she was reading made a dash. Remember, the key word here is made. After made, you must not have to after made. You must not have the verb coming there, supposed not to have to before it. Supposed not to be, not to, not to, not to of course, uh, go, I mean, carry S or ING, you know, or, or in fact, being passed in at that. Okay, it must be in a bare infinitive state, in a plural state, and there must be no two after it, no two after it again. So the story she was reading made a dash. A, we have laughed. Oh, this one is in past tense. It's wrong. Then B, to laugh. Why? Because about the two we have here is wrong. Uh, C, made a laugh. Correct? So our answer is option C. And D, uh, made a laughing. This one what contains ing is not so answer is what is option c so we proceed the prefect swore he would make let commas dash the toilet the prefect swore he would make let commas dash the toilet okay remember 2004 and then the key thing is what is make okay he would make okay the the, phrase, the verb phrase has been would would make would make but the component here the key thing has been make because of make okay this one together forms a verb phrase, but the key element we want to look at here is what is make. 
and we say after make the make attract by infinitive the verb coming supposed not to have to before it supposed not to take s ing not in past tense it must be in the prior state of that so we have here the prefect swore he would make the late commas dash toilet a we have scrub scrub is the correct option b we have to scrub well we have two here is wrong then c we have to have scrub well it's wrong all this makes it very odd at that and d to be scrubbed so it's wrong so answer is what is scrub so you must have no to before it no other verb after it you must only have uh, the verb supposed to be in a bare infinitive state okay next question i saw the keeper dash a fantastic goal bound ball i saw the keeper dash a fantastic goal bound ball okay november 2004 the same year now again the key thing here as being so okay and so is the kind of verb that attracts bare infinitive, meaning the verb coming after so or so is supposed to be in a bare infinitive. See, I'm emphasizing the issue of bare infinitive. You know now, I mean, the verb is supposed to take S, no ing, no past tense, so we call them bare infinitive verb. So now we have what? A, we have, uh, I saw the keeper dash a fantastic uh, goal bound ball. To save is wrong. Why? Because we have two after it here. I saw the keeper saved is wrong why it's in past tense. And uh, see, I saw the keeper save is fine. Option C is the correct option. And then we have having save is wrong. So answer is option C. So I saw the keeper save a fantastic goal bound ball. Okay. So does Umar dash in the city? Does Umar dash in the city? Okay, June 2010. Okay, yeah, the key thing here is does. I remember I told you other verb do, does, did, they attract bare infinitive. After then, the verb coming supposed to be in bare infinitive. No S, no ING, no to, you, you know, no, no, whatever. So A we have here, does Uma dash in the city A we have lives. It's wrong because we have S after it. B, does Umar live? Is wrong because it's in past tense. Does Umar live? Is correct. Our answer is option C. And does Umar live in? Oh, it contains ING element. So, of course, does Umar live in the city? So, that's the answer. Okay, so we are going for a break. When we come back, we will look at some pronunciation. We look at some accent challenge stuff. British and American. Since the inception of the West African Senior Secondary School Certificate Examination, university requirement has largely called for five subjects. Mandatory among these are English language and mathematics. Every year, thousands of students run into the course of either having to resit for not getting credits on English and mathematics or painfully changing career path or into same. To help modify this narrative, Star Television presents on your screen Learning Garage, a platform that guarantees better performance in English language and mathematics with a team of experienced teachers. To this solution, you all are invited, especially those facing WASC. Learning Garage comes to you on Mondays, Wednesdays and Fridays from 7 p.m. to 8 p.m. Repeat broadcast are screened on Saturdays from 7 a.m. to 8 a.m. and on Sundays from 1 p.m. to 2 p.m. Join host Ali Santa Kamara. If you mean such element, then of course we we'll say the waters of the world in that regard. And Babatunde Gaira Lamin on these days to make a world of difference. Action that has a numerator which is less than the denominator will term it as a proper fraction. Welcome back. Of course, um, in the first segment of this class, we looked at some components making verbs, and of course, we looked at some past questions, some past questions on a verb. And now, let's now draw our attention to accent uh, challenge, meaning how we pronounce words, the American way and the British way, so British accent and American accent. So I have here a couple of words, and then let's just quickly see how these two. I mean, the right is pronounce the words. So, 
if you are in Britain or you want to follow the British way, uh, they would say, for instance, um, leisure. L e i s u r e is leisure. British way, leisure. American way is leisure. 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 So leisure, British. Leisure, American way. Next one, we have um, status. Status, British way. If you, say, if you say status, you are talking about the, the accent from Britain. Of course, status. But if you say status, status is the American way. Status, status, which is status, American. Next, we have, um, if you say, for instance, patronize. Patronize is British. If you say patronize is American. Patronize. Patronize, which is, of course, patronize, American. Next, uh, we have military. Military. Military is British. Is military. Military is American. So the American will call only, only the syllable there. So the British people will say military. American will say military. Next, we have, of course, um, zebra. Zebra is which is zebra. Zebra. American will say zebra. So zebra, American. Zebra, British. Next, we have um, can't. Can't is British. We have can't. Can't is American. Can't is American. Can't is, of course, um, British. Next, we have, uh, we have vitamin. Vitamin is British. If you say vitamin, va va vitamin, vitamin is American. Vitamin, vitamin A. Vitamin A, you mean, of course, American, but we say vitamin is British. Again, we have uh, privacy. I need my privacy. You mean, of course, this way. In Britain, it's called privacy. American will say, of course, privacy. So privacy, privacy, it's a matter of choice. Of course, this is how I will draw the cotton down for today's edition. I have been your presenter, Santa Tata. Since the inception of the West African Senior Secondary School Certificate Examination, university requirement has largely called for five subjects. Mandatory among these are English language and mathematics. Every year, thousands of students run into the course of either having to resit for not getting credits on English and mathematics or painfully changing career path or into same. To help modify this narrative, Star Television presents on your screen Learning Garage, a platform that guarantees better performance in English language and mathematics with a team of experienced teachers. To this solution, you all are invited, especially those facing WASC. Learning Garage comes to you on Mondays, Wednesdays and Fridays from 7 p.m. to 8 p.m. Repeat broadcast are screened on Saturdays from 7 a.m. to 8 a.m. and on Sundays from 1 p.m. to 2 p.m. Join host Ali Santa Kamara. If you mean such element, then of course we we'll say the waters of the world in that regard. And Babatunde Gaira Lamin on these days to make a world of difference. Action that has a numerator which is less than the denominator, we term it as a proper fraction. Thank you.